Hey guys, it's Saturday, August 15th. The time is 1.07 p.m. and the temperature is 26 degrees Celsius. I'm here just off of Front Street in front of the St. Lawrence Market. And today is going to be a different kind of walk as I'll be joined by Ken here from the Ken Continuum. Johnny Strides. <laughs> this is Ken. You guys might be familiar with this channel. If you're not, check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. I'm sure many of you also watch Johnny Strides' channel who watches my channel. Probably many more of you actually. <laughs> <laughs> you could even watch the same walk twice on each of our channels. That's right. We'll link to each other's videos of course. So we're heading uh, south on Lower Jarvis Street right now. Just passing St. Lawrence Market. Which is open. Yeah, it's quite a big lineup to get in. I think I heard someone say about 15 minutes. Really? Wow. So there's a couple interesting things uh, that we'll check out in a few minutes. I've shown them, I think, in a couple of my older videos, but I don't think since I've gotten this new camera. I think that was with my old iPhone videos, which are all shaky and crappy looking. <laughs> They were, they were a little <laughs> unstabilized. Yeah, I had no stabilization. Basically, my hand like this was my stabilization. But those <laughs> videos kind of... I think you were the first one doing that in Toronto, at least regularly. I think so. Um, I'm not sure like if you count Torontopia's videos, he was doing them, but not the long-form walking videos, yeah. like like hour-long type videos, you know? I kind of got that inspiration from Action Kid, you know? Which is where yeah. I got my inspiration from, <laughs> and then I saw you were getting at the time, like four or five hundred views a video, and I'm like, oh, there's an audience for that in Toronto. Right. <laughs> so I stopped doing those stupid little hyperlapses and just started doing more longer form. Yeah, I was watching your hyperlapses, yeah. Yeah, they were uh, a lot of effort to make a two minute video. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing about these long form ones, it's so simple. You just take a walk, and that's it. You just yeah. walk with your camera. And uploading them is, is a cinch too, you know, like very little editing or anything. Just press a button and yeah. wait 12 <laughs> hours and hope it gets there, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the temporary northern market right there? Right, yeah. And, uh, the new one is under construction up there. You can see the tower crane. Do you know when that'll be opening? Probably not for a few years, but it looks good. It looks kind of like a giant respite center. It does, yeah. <laughs> There's quite a few people out right now. It looks almost normal. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Until you go indoors and everyone's got the mask on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, whenever I walk by here, I'm always a little bit annoyed that there's no sidewalks along this stretch here. Yep. Well, the nice stretch just it's just up ahead. Right. So this is westwards on the Esplanade, which is a street that runs parallel to Front Street. It's one block south of it. If I say something wrong, feel free to fact check me. All right. Someone will surely do it in the comments anyways. But. <laughs> yeah, this is a really nice street to walk along. It's one of my favorites. Market Street or Esplanade? Both, actually, yeah. Yeah, this street is beautiful. They completely redone it. I remember when it used to be rather plain looking and they added all the nice, you know, brickwork and street furniture and it looks like 100% better now. And the nice retail moved in across the street. Yeah, nice coffee shop. Uh, I'm just really glad that pedestrian activity has been going up because it was kind of depressing walking around an empty looking city, you know? Like, and I made the videos less interesting too. I'm glad we got to document that. Like, it's a really cool yeah. slice of history. Right. But at the same time, enough was enough. <laughs> like, yeah, totally. Yeah. Like, I miss my city. Right. So. Yeah, the videos that I posted that show the empty city did pretty well. Yeah, I think those ones in time will continue to get searched and looked at probably more than. Oh yeah, regular times because it, it is kind of a special time. In, I hope it's a special time in history, and it doesn't. Yeah, repeat itself. like because you'll know, like every spring, people will be like, "Yeah, I remember what it was like in the spring of 2020?" You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Market 
for you. Can I check this? Weird looking bike hole. <laughs> They're from Quebec. I'm guessing they threw those on the back of a truck and drove them over. Right. <laughs> so this is Front Street we're circling back to. We're getting weird looks doing this on our own. We're going to get extra weird looks now with the both of us doing it. Well, at least I'm not talking to myself. Or like yesterday when I was streaming, talking into my phone. <laughs> I'm just oblivious to the stairs now. You know, I remember at first, I was a little bit self-conscious. Now, I just talk to myself and I'm not even phased anymore. Sometimes I quiet up a little bit when I, when it's just you and one other person at Thursday, what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> I'll bite my lip and wait till they're just out of sight. Yeah, sometimes I just wait an extra second or so, yeah. <laughs> Do you know if Imagine is reopened? Actually, I don't there. know if it is, you know? That's the one I usually go to for the cheap prices. Well, they put in those luxury leather recliners now, so not only is it cheap, it's super comfortable. Right, yeah. That was one of the things holding people back back from going there. They didn't find it as comfy as the newer theaters, but no excuses now. This is a beautiful old block of buildings here. Can you give us the exact history on them? No, I'm afraid, <laughs> I'm afraid I didn't really... Uh, check those facts out <laughs> i do cheat on my way down on doing the walks yeah the only things i really look up are just historical buildings and dates right right things like that and i try to remember them and i end up forgetting half so i don't even mention half of the stuff <laughs> but i'm pretty sure the buildings on this side of uh front street for the, this block and the next block are over 100 years old easily she was singing in the park on the way over Oh, yeah. <laughs> and for historical purposes, there used to be a Wendy's located right here, if you can remember. Oh, nice. nice. I used to live in this neighborhood mid 2000s sometime. Yeah. Just watch this document. Oh, yeah? Okay. Your opinion. So, this is the Flatiron building for the Gooderham and Warts. Head office. It's one of the former offices, right? It's obviously not operating anymore. I think it's part of the Hiram Walker Group. Really? Yeah. They're still branded Gooderham whiskey out there. Yeah. The main thing I know about the, this Flatiron building is it's older than the, the one in New York, but of course it's like far, far smaller. <laughs> It's also probably a top five Toronto postcard. Oh, for sure, yeah. So we're gonna keep going straight here? Yeah, actually, we'll go down Church Street here. A couple of cool things we'll check out. There is another flat iron building in Toronto that is actually tall. It's Isn't tall. it right here in the Esplanade? Yeah, and there's a brand new one on York Street that's really tall, that condo 10 York. Oh yeah, I've seen yeah. that. It's got kind of a very bare face facing one side. Right, yeah. Of course, those aren't all historical like this, this nope. beauty here. I've always wanted to climb up that fire escape. <laughs> one day I will. Now, Church Street. South on Church Street, and the next block would be back to the Esplanade. So we've just kind of been ping-ponging back and forth. I love the buildings on this side of Church Street, too. And we're on the shady side of the street, which I'm a big fan of. <laughs> Sometimes the ISO on this camera dips a bit too much in the shade. Have you noticed that? And it gets stuck yeah. where it's too dark and you have to right. wake it up by tapping it. Yeah. And I'm sure our viewers are all familiar with Action Kid. He started using the same camera we have now on some of his walks, mm -hmm. which is 
kind of interesting. It's caught on so much. Probably the number one YouTuber in this genre is now using it. I find it funny that Action Kid and I have the same name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a uh, Goose Island, which is part of the beer market, right? Check this out. This is a Banksy. An original Banksy. An original, original Banksy. I think it's the only one in Toronto now that's still in its original location. Other ones have been cut away and taken off and put on display in different spots. Like there's one in the lobby of an office building that they cut off the side of a building. I wonder if they have any kind of security on that at night. I don't know. Church Street just kind of comes to a crappy ending straight ahead. Now we're back on the Esplanade again. Patio Central. Yeah. <laughs> if you are at Goose Island at night, you can just go into the beer market and vice versa. They're linked together. But they're like, not like the Husky Love. Like, I like the Husky This is the backside of that other flat iron building Ken was mentioning. Yeah, it's not nearly as nice on the backside <laughs> as it is on the front. Factory coming up. It's a chain restaurant, but I've been to it a couple times and I've always enjoyed it. So. <laughs> People talk crap about it, and it is usually full of 905ers, but at the same time, it's good spaghetti. I don't. Yeah. It's probably overpriced for what it is, but it's still good. Yeah. A couple of times, some of my uh, work holiday get-togethers have been here at the Spaghetti Factory, and it's always been good. This is kind of known as a bit of a patio street part of Esplanade. If we were to turn around and go the other way, it would take us all the way to the distillery district. Which is a walk I'll be trying to get in next week. If someone has requested it. And that was actually the first place I dined at since this whole uh, pandemic. Really? Yeah. I went there last week. They have a big patio space outside where you can order on your phone from a number of restaurants. Oh, wow drink service so it's not really a restaurant experience but right I think they still expect you to leave a tip so yeah can't forget the most important part of the restaurant experience Didn't this used to be a keg or did we walk by the keg I think is it yeah look at the sign right oh the keg's sign, closed the actual restaurant <laughs> Uh, a brunch spot. Looking up at the L Tower. Yeah. It didn't turn out as well as I was hoping, but it's still pretty cool to look at. They kind of neutered the base of it. It's supposed to have this big boot type feature that yeah. kind of swooped up. I think they cheaped out on the glass too, but. And I've heard it's a like a lot of new condos. It's a mechanical nightmare. There's been flooding. Oh yeah. Remember how long it took them to take that crane off the top? <laughs> I was watching that from my office in First Canadian Place at the time. Like about three years after the building was finished. Yep. Huh. Well, it's ambitious. Just up ahead is Young Street. And we are south of Front Street, so does this mean we're walking where the shoreline used to be right now? or? You know what? I think we walked by that thing I wanted to uh, point out that shows the original shoreline and I didn't even notice it. It's kind of hard to, to notice if you're not looking for it. Because all of this area to the south, which is now called the South Core, is all infill, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. I think everything we're walking on right now used to be lake. Just reclaimed land. Mm -hmm. Here's the other flat iron building from the front. Look at the other flat iron building.
And it's about as tall as the one in New York, only it was built in the 1980s, so it's not quite the same. No, I don't think many tourists are going out of their way to catch no. a glimpse of that. The CIBC towers are almost finished. Yeah. Yeah. The second one's going to go right here where the bus terminal is. They're relocating the bus terminal? Yeah, or? to the base of the first tower. It'll be a brand new bus terminal, new and improved and bigger. Let's look north of Young Street. One King West is that skinny, tall hotel slash condo. I think that was a Harry Stinson project. Mm -hmm. I think it was his only uh, successful skyscraper project, wasn't it? Yeah. I think someone stole my car. <laughs> People wanted to see supercars in your uh, live stream yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> someone kept asking, show me supercars, show me, like, how do I, do I just blow my supercar whistle and summon one? <laughs> right. I mean, it would be pretty much a sure thing if you just walked around Yorkville or even North York, north of Shepherd, there's a lot of all that international investor money. Right. Yep. Or the children of the international investors. Yeah, more accurately. Yeah. <laughs> so we're coming up on the financial district, which probably be eerily quiet right now. <laughs> That's the Hockey Hall of Fame, straight ahead. Former bank. And I have never actually been to this location. I went to the old one at the exhibition place. Oh yeah, I've never been either. Are you a hockey fan? Not especially, no. Yeah, me neither. No. I wasn't, too, wasn't even aware the Leafs got bounced from their uh, pseudo playoffs. Right? <laughs> yeah, I'm a bad Canadian. My indifference to hockey, but oh well. I make up for it in other ways. There's the old Dominion building. Now a Government of Canada office. It's one of the grander buildings you find downtown. They really tore down a lot of that kind of history in the 50s and 60s and replaced it with these brutalist concrete boxes, right? Yeah. You know there's a proposal to plunk two skyscrapers on top of the Dominion building? That would be interesting. Yeah. But they're going to maintain, you know, the actual old Dominion so building. So it's not just a facade, it's actual... Right, the building will still be there in its entirety. There will just be a couple of tall buildings on top of it. That'll be neat. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't ruin it, you know. I'm all for density where it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, on a subway line, in the core, as long as the infrastructure can support it. Mm -hmm. Like your waste management schooling, as long as you have that capacity, why wouldn't you want to build up? Right. I'm a huge fan of skyscrapers since childhood. That's kind of why I live where I live and why I like to make videos where I show skyscrapers, you know, constantly. I just love them. Yeah, I remember watching Scotia Plaza go up as a kid from my grandmother's apartment up at Tychester, which is just north of St. Clair. Yeah. And I would just sit on the balcony and stare at it. It was always the weekend when I was there, so nothing was happening, but I would just stare at this half-built skyscraper. And that was around the time BCE Place was going on. Right. Now you mentioned uh, Scotia Plaza was your favorite skyscraper. It's mine also. Yeah, it's the most unique. It's the second tallest, at least for now, until One Blur East is completed. Yeah. So this is Wellington Street, which is kind of like a back alley in the financial district. You get the rear ends of a lot of big towers. And the former Marche right behind us. Was that closed down? Yeah, uh, they uh, exited Canada. Actually. Oh, jeez. We have very different styles of holding these cameras. I know, we right? Have the, the yeah. same camera. <laughs> 
can hold his holds his kind of vertically and I'm more horizontal. Yeah, mine's a lot more obvious when people are walking by. <laughs> to me it just looks like I'm holding a phone. Which yeah. is, I wanted that kind of fly in the wall effect. Yeah. I think I probably get a lot more weird looks than you do because of the way I hold my camera. Well, it's pretty obvious that you're holding it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, hey, look, I have a camera sticking up in front of my face. Yeah. We're entering a music, a music copyright uh, oh, yeah. situation here. It's one of the pains of my existence. <laughs> yeah, just keep on talking until we pass by. I'm just trying to move back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah walk like fast. Yesterday I walked through the Eaton Center and I was shocked I didn't pick up a copyright violation. Yeah, I've been lucky. I haven't gotten more than I think two or three in the whole time I've been doing this. What I was doing was I was making like a low quality copy of my video and then uploading that really quickly to let YouTube scan it for copyrights. Mm -hmm. And then I would know ahead of time before I uploaded the actual one. Right. And then Action Kid taught me a trick where why don't you just take out the video and go with a black screen and just upload the audio. Oh, that's good, yeah. You wanna go up here? Sure. Have you seen that elephant uh, statue thing? <laughs> Not that I recall. So this is Melinda Street. And it, it's kind of a little way to circumvent part of the financial district. I really like these sort of narrow little tucked in streets in the financial district because everything is so hemmed in and the buildings just seem to tower over you a lot more. It's got a very Manhattan, New York type feel to it right yeah. here. Especially with one of our only few true Art Deco skyscrapers right here. Right. Commerce Court North. Which was the tallest building in the British Empire. British Commonwealth when it was built, it surpassed the Royal York Hotel, which was built just a few years earlier. So if you see really old postcards or pictures of the skyline, it's this building and the Royal York. And everything else just looks like a short little stump covered in soot. Yeah. It was an industrial port, right? You look at old pictures of uh, Toronto before the modern bank towers were built, it kind of looks like present day Buffalo. I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah. We took away Buffalo's current tallest building. They look pretty much the same. And that building straight ahead, the Royal Bank, they had that transformer explosion I underground. Remember. Yeah, I remember that. And they had to vacate the entire building and they were redoing something. Mm -hmm. I was actually on the news for that because I was walking on top of the grate as it was smoking. Oh, wow. And then someone saw me on CP24 and he sent me a message like, hey, <laughs> you idiot, you're walking through. The <laughs> wow, really? Like it had just happened and I was curious. I just got off work. Yeah. So I wandered into it. This is Commerce Port West. Wind happened. That's why you should have a wind cover on your camera. I know, right? I'm assuming that this fountain is not functioning because of COVID. Yeah, I think all of the fountains are turned off, except for the one in Yum Dunda Square, I think. Because Nathan Phillips Square is all turned off. Berksy Park. Yep. And that Salmon Run fountain by the CN Tower, too, is turned off, I noticed. This is Tembo Mother of Elephants. I had to look it up to see what it was actually called. <laughs> Here's some things you will never find on my channel, folks. <laughs> and obviously, this is a life-size statue. You just you know, get a sense of how ginormous these beasts are. This is a female ele elephant, so it's smaller than a male would be. Uh, assuming by this view it would be a female. Right. <laughs> I wonder how they would do it if it were a male. <laughs> This is one of my little favorite little nooks in the financial district. Scotia Plaza, Ernst & Young Tower, one of the fake Mies van der Rohe Towers. Right. Yeah. That was part of the TD Center. You can find almost mirror images of these buildings in New York and Chicago. I think just the first three towers are the originals and then 
two after that are the fakes, so. right? Yeah, I think there might be three after. I think okay. I saw there's five or six. Well, I thought there was five. This is the old Toronto Stock Exchange facade, which is still being restored. I'm assuming that's what they're doing. Sometimes I say things as if I know what's happening, and then I realize I was just talking out of my butt. <laughs> Yeah, underneath that canvas is a pretty nice looking old building that has been completely subsumed by this <laughs> office building. In one of these towers, some lawyer in the 90s jumped to his death out of. Oh, I heard that. I heard about that. Showing off how strong the glass was. Yeah. yeah. Is that an urban legend or no, is that it's, real? It's real. Yeah. It's the first Canadian place. For now, the tallest quote unquote building in all of Canada, which means we do not even have a single super tall building, which would be defined as over 300 meters or a thousand feet. That's two meters shy. Basically as tall as Johnny here. <laughs> if you stood on top of that, it would be a super tall. This is true. Or if they <laughs> counted the antenna as part of the, the building, because when they built the Petronas Towers in Malaysia, they became the world's tallest buildings even though they were nowhere near as tall as the Sears Tower because they had those ornaments, those spires. Yep. And the Sears Tower had an antenna, but because the antenna is detachable, it didn't count as the height. Right. So the highest floor of the Sears Tower was like 15 stories. It was well above the highest floor mm -hmm. of the Matronas. Same with the uh, One World Trade Center in New York. Its roof height is still lower than the Sears Tower. It just gets that super tall, number one status because of its ginormous spire on top. The old architectural cheat. Yeah. And I think the antennas on top of First Canadian Place would bring it up to 355 meters if they were included. I just think we need some consistency on that. Mm -hmm. An antenna <laughs> or a spire should either count or not count. Yeah. Or it should be roof height plus ornament. Right. That way you have two categories. But. What do I know about ranking tall buildings? I like to, uh, to look at skyscraper forums where everyone talks about skyscrapers and shows pictures of skyscrapers and argues about skyscrapers. It's pretty nerdy, but pretty fun. Well, back in the day before the internet really blew up. I remember being on Skyscraper Page and Skyscraper Cities oh, and yeah. Urban Toronto. I'm on all those sites, yeah. Urban Toronto's like original forum and I had such a big post history and then they changed to like a different forum and I lost all my history. Oh. I was, so you're not... I was like, oh, I'm not who I'm... You don't post anymore on them? That was kind of the last straw with that. Okay. <laughs> I still regularly post on Skyscraper Page and, and I'm more of a lurker on urban toronto i just make the occasional post i'm glad that page has kind of blown up and become a legitimate reference because it was always the best source of information on any type of development oh for sure even going back to the very early days yep back when the trump tower was just a proposal and a pipe dream yep so we are now heading north on bay street in the financial district which I've been through here on a few weekday afternoons lately, and it's not much different than this. Yeah, it's kind of depressing, because I always like the hustle and bustle in the financial district. I like walking through it sometimes, just to get that big city feel, you know? Especially in the summertime when people are at street level and they're not all burrowed down in the path. Yeah. So I know a lot of companies are saying work from home might be permanent, but Part of me hopes that isn't true because <laughs> I, w I really want the financial district to get back to normal or at least close to normal again. But, uh, and there's so many businesses that are dependent yeah. on all those people. Yeah. There's going to be a big shift in spending patterns for sure. Yeah. I have a feeling that a lot of people will go back to work in offices again because I've been hearing reports that like initially work from home seems to go really well but over time productivity starts to decrease. And I think you just can't like, get up and tap someone on the shoulder and say, remember that webinar we took four months ago where we learned how to do this thing? How do I do that again? Yeah. You're just kind of <laughs> stuck there, left to your own devices. Yeah. And what about work camaraderie and like getting to know your coworkers? Like, does that just not matter anymore? I mean, you know. Yeah. 
I think we'll probably see some kind of hybrid solution where more people are working from home two or three times a week. Yeah. There's and the, there's still a bunch of office buildings being built, and so obviously they're going to be full of workers when they're completed. They're not building them for nothing. Well, they were... That'll be interesting, because they were obviously in the works long before this pandemic. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they're going to say, well, you know, we're building this thing. <laughs> we want people to come and work in them now. They might not get the rents that they thought they were going to get. But. Yeah, I've walked by here plenty of times and I've seen uh, that show Suits being filmed here. Yeah, I've seen camera crews quite often in this area. Yeah, kind of a... I'm surprised they actually film the show here and they'll just do exterior shots. Mm -hmm. I always kind of get a kick of when they have all the New York taxi cabs and the New York fake subway entrances and the mailboxes and the street signs set up. You know? It's not uncommon to see an old New York police car on the streets in Toronto. Yeah. Clearly a prop. So this is Temperance Street. A nice little street. Well, when it's not construction zone. Here's one of those new office buildings being constructed. It says Scotia Bank on it. I thought that was the uh, part of the Bay Adelaide Center. It is. It's the third tower of the Bay Adelaide Center. Which for the longest time in the 90s was just a stump. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. This is a really narrow, dark street. I kind of dig it though. It's one of those hemmed in streets I was talking about. Do you want to take a walk down it? Yeah, sure. I think we're good. Not usually any car traffic coming down here very often. Don't have to worry too much about walking down the middle of the street. <laughs> Hopefully our microphones pick that up because that was pretty I loud. I know, right? Yeah. It's the Oyster House. The noise hasn't died down in Toronto, <laughs> even though everything else seems to have. And I believe that's the new Ernst & Young Tower straight ahead. That's all glass. Yeah. AMG 99 on a BMW. That's a, probably a former Mercedes owner. <laughs> but even on the weekends, even though things are starting to feel normal without all the out of towners, it still feels like half of right what it should be, right? I know. Every time I'm at Young and Dundas, I'm like, this is just a fraction of what it should be. And even the people from the outskirts of Toronto have less incentive to come in. What am I going to do? Go in there and sit in the patio? What if it rains? Right? I know, yeah. So there's a lot less people coming into the core. Yep. That money shot of First Canadian place here. Yeah, this is one of my favorite view terminuses. Is that the expression for a building that blocks the end of a street? It is now. Yeah. <laughs> Someone taking a picture of it. <laughs> so where to now? Maybe we'll head up to Richmond and then down to University. All right. We'll go back down University to front. And then maybe how about we, we end the video at Union Station just to see if it's still eerily empty as it was last time I was there. All right, sounds good. Yeah. This was a very not planned video. Oh, so. yeah, we're just walking. We're just walking. 
but we've been doing the, this solo for so long. It's kind of nice to just mix it up. Yeah. And I noticed that, I know we keep bringing them up, but the Action Kid has had a lot of guests and other walkers on his channel, people that have their own YouTube channel. So it's kind of nice to hear their thoughts bounce off each other. So this is kind of a, a Toronto version, right? The street is more or less just a traffic funnel. Richmond? Yeah. yeah. I would say this is like the northern border of the financial district. Not much in the way of retail. A couple restaurants here and there. It's like Wellington in that it's the build. This isn't the good side of the buildings, right? right. It's kind of a. It does lead into the old payday or entertainment district hotspot. Which is now the condo district. <laughs> People moved in and then they complained at all the noise. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. So I remember in the 90s at the peak of it, there was something like 80 plus nightclubs crammed into that area. Now there's, what, maybe half a dozen at most? Yeah, in the mid 2000s, it started to get its death blows, I guess. Yeah. The condo intensification really picked up. It started all at City Place and then it just kind of spread like wildfire through the court. And then you had people moving into an area that was notorious for its noise and nightlife. Yeah. And complaining about it. And eventually there was enough critical mass. And the city put a homeless shelter there for better or worse. Right. That kind of dampened things, so to speak, in the old Fez boutique. For me personally, I've never been a nightclub type person, so I didn't really miss the nightclubs when they disappeared. And I love tall buildings, and now all the tall buildings are there, so I'm not really complaining too much, but that's just me, you know? For me, even though, like now, I would have no use for an area like that, I think it's cool to have that. I think it's just to have that type of vibrancy in your city. Now everything's a little bit more grown up feeling down on King Street. But also the era of the super club is dead, right? Like people just don't go to the club and try to get as many phone numbers as they can, which was the game you did before apps and internet dating. Yeah. It's just a... I think, wasn't Toronto considered like the, the pickup artist capital of the world or something at one point? <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that. <laughs> yeah. I know there's some shady characters sometimes around Young and Dundas that are known for that these days even. Yeah. There was one really famous pickup artist guy who was actually a pseudo celebrity. I think his name was Mystery. And he wore big fuzzy hats. That's all I remember. And he appeared on some reality TV shows and whatnot. He was Toronto's representative of the uh, pickup culture. <laughs> yeah, well, if I try anything a thousand times, I'll get a yes culture. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically it. Yeah. I have no shame. So PLM. Did not have the best odor. No, oh, pretty musty and gross. This building straight ahead, I quite like. This white one. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see something that isn't a generic glass box. Yeah, but unfortunately, I have some bad news. There's a proposal to, to build a, a condo on top of it. On top of that? Yeah. That already. It's amazing how Toronto has transformed so much in the last few decades, yet I bet two decades from now we're, we're not even going to recognize it. Yeah. University Avenue. So we're going to go south here down to Union. Was that the plan? or? Yeah. Canada Life Building is one of my favorite old buildings in the city. Mm. 
University Avenue is like our grand avenue, I guess you would say. It's like eight lanes wide with a nice median down the center with statues and greenery. greenery. It's pretty fancy compared to just about any other street in downtown, I would say. It is. And you have the U.S. consulate, like all the high-tech hospitals. On the north end, financial district on the south end. I'm almost curious whose video is going to look more stable because we're <laughs> completely holding these different. <laughs> I had to switch hands because my thumb was getting numb. I do that sometimes. Yeah. I had to do that yesterday holding that giant gimbal for the live stream. Right, yeah. Tower poking out from behind a smokestack. <laughs> Not really a smokestack, more like a steam stack, right? Yeah, that's a. Yeah. I don't actually know what facility that's part of. Isn't it N Wave? That's Something what I was like thinking. There's like yeah. a big trans block that's just transformers. That's where that is. We are heading south, and this is Adelaide Street. Did I hear yesterday in your live stream that you said you don't you don't drive? I when I moved into the city, I had a car, and it was actually a lease, so I was paying that, and I was paying insurance, and my job was on the subway, so I was just like, this doesn't make any sense. Right. So I got rid of it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't own a car. I don't drive. I don't even have a license. <laughs> That's like why <laughs> I don't need it, you know. I do rent cars whenever I need. I have a my family's out in Niagara Falls, so I rent. Right. And I was getting a pretty nice company discount, something like twenty four, twenty five dollars a day for yeah. enterprise. So to me, it's if I need a car once a month, I just rent it. The transit here is good enough. Oh, I, ride, sure. I ride my bike everywhere. I don't like locking it up just because. It'll disappear in two seconds. Yeah. Some guy in Moss Park will throw it on his pile of bikes. Right. I have a bike. I haven't uh, ridden it in a while. It has uh, flat tires and I just, I'm just too lazy to get them fixed. I just keep putting it off and putting it off and the next thing I know it's winter again. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually bike through most of our winters. It's only when, when the ground is kind of frozen over. That it... Yeah, that's true. Tons of people don't let the Toronto winter stop them from biking. I'm hoping this year I can do a lot more winter cycling videos. It's kind of a money shot. That's one of my favorite views. Every time I see a shot like that, I think this could be a thumbnail. And I just kind of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, these sound like... There's Toronto's most famous Airbnb towering over in the background there. <laughs> the ice condos. Yeah. Isn't that where a chair girl threw her chair from? It was actually um, Maple Leaf Square, oh, which so is just across the street from. A block to the east of there. Yeah. Yeah, chair girl. <laughs> That whole area was just bare parking lots and absolutely nothing back in the day. Mm -hmm. The whole community has started up. Yep. It's basically the equivalent of a whole big city skyline for any other city in North America just about. But in Toronto it's just a small section of, of the downtown, you know? Yeah, I mentioned this I think in one of my other videos. But we have more skyscrapers under construction than any other city in North America, That's true. including New York. Yeah. And it's been that way for like 10 or 15 years. Yeah. yeah. And Toronto is on the verge of surpassing Chicago now for skyscrapers. We're but, already ahead of Chicago in high rises, 
which That's, are, you know, like... But skyscraper is over 500 feet. Right. But. He's talking about actual skyscrapers. We're going to surpass Chicago probably within the next few years. But Chicago easily has the better collection of skyscrapers. Yeah. There's <laughs> no. Yeah, they had a bit of a they, head start on us. They, they can hold their own with New York and in terms of their history. Yeah. But in terms of sheer volume, we're number two, baby. Yeah. And a lot of our newer buildings in the last few years are looking a lot better design-wise than the batch in the previous 10 years, which, you know, tended to be a lot of the same glassy boxes kind of thing. Which was an upgrade over a lot of the 60s and 70s. Concrete boxes, yeah. <laughs> 90 degree right angles. A lot of them were, are kind of classic, but then you get a lot of things like this, where you're just like, right, yeah. that's <laughs> the most generic building in the world, <laughs> yeah. right there. Or the one behind it. Right. That's like your classic suburban office park tower, sitting downtown. <laughs> King Street, which I would say is like the main street of the financial district with Bay. King and Bay is yeah. for sure the epicenter. Bay Street is basically our Wall Street. The Bay Street bankers, that's what people like to talk about. Yeah, it's a, and a lot of those companies, the majority of them are either in finance or insurance. And those are the companies that can afford to keep their employees at home. Mm -hmm. So they kind of don't want to be vilified by having their employees fill up the subway at the same time that schools are reopening. Right. So anyone who works for like an insurance company or a big bank is pretty much staying home almost indefinitely. Wow. I know a lot of those companies have announced October, November at the earliest. Mm -hmm. Some have already announced not this year. So they're kind of staying out of the way because they have the ability to cope with so many employees working from home and they have the resources to carry on. And a lot of them have even started hiring and they're onboarding employees oh, yeah? who have never stepped foot in the office because the job market's starting to bounce back a bit. That seems odd to me, you know, to work for a company where you've never set foot in the actual physical location of the company. Yeah, but I think there's now a whole sort of culture of people getting recruited and interviewing virtually and getting hired virtually. Yeah. And just sort of saying, hey, I'm going to, there's a better opportunity. I want more money. I want more vacation, whatever. You know? So what if there's a pandemic? I'm going to switch. Yeah. So we're starting to see things normalize in sort of a, a weird new normal. This is all anecdotal, but I've known that it's happened enough times that there's definitely something happening. I heard that Scotia Plaza, at least, our favorite skyscraper, is planning to have people come back to the office after New Year's. But we'll see if that actually happens. It makes sense, kind of ease the burden on the transit. I imagine we might see more staggered work times, like people coming in as early as six or seven and people as late as 11 or 12, just to sort of keep the crush of, right. I also heard that Shopify has said that they're going to go 100% work from home, but yet over at the well construction site, that new office tower that's under construction right now, Shopify has leased 375,000 square feet in that building. So I'm thinking, okay, well, yeah, what's going to happen there, you know? Sublease it, but to who? That's yeah. good. Bottle max, 20 million. That would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> we don't quite have the Powerball jackpot that they have in the States, but you can't make yourself happy on 20 million, Ben. <laughs> I don't really feel sorry for you. I could easily live the rest of my life in relative comfort with a million dollars, you know, without... Oh, if you had a yeah. few million, you could, if you're willing to live modest, 
the interest alone could keep you afloat. Yeah. As long as you, you stay modest. Yeah. And if you go for the guaranteed returns, you're going to get far less interest. So you're not maximizing your money at all, but if your goal is to just live, yeah. walk around the city with a camera all day. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> this is where university kind of awkwardly comes to an end at York Street and Front. That new CIBC building looks pretty good from this angle, I have to say. One thing I am a little sad about is that sort of classic Toronto skyline view that you got from the lake or coming in on the Gardner Expressway from the west. Yeah. It's kind of losing its form. Like there used to be the CN Tower, then a clear like valley. Yeah. And then another peak on First Canadian Place. There were clearly defined clusters of skyscrapers. And now these condos are so big, they've just kind of filled in all those gaps. Yeah, it's just like a big lump now, right? We could probably, I mean, there's... I mean, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> no oh, one's going to yell at us. One of these... Quiet streets? Quiet streets. Well, the, this is where a lot of the NHL teams are stationed. At the Royal York. Good view of the L Tower from there. I think something like this would be far more striking without the sort of nondescript condos on either side. Yeah, it does take away from the impact. Yeah. It's kind of like when you see those Marilyn Monroe buildings in Mississauga. They're quite stunning, and then there's just like a whole block of pretty tall, generic condos. Yeah, just hanging out with them. The Maryland buildings are going to get a few new neighbors that are equally as interesting. I saw in urban Toronto some of the designs of the, some new towers that are about to go up. They're like all twisty and interesting and weird, you know. So Mississauga is going to probably have a more interesting, kind of unique-looking skyline than than in Toronto, like in the long run. Well, that might be a stretch, but certainly <laughs> than a lot of Canadian cities. Yeah. Like when you see it from Pearson Airport, it looks huge. Yeah, it does, yeah. I think a lot of people who don't know, who are visiting the city for the first time, think that's downtown Toronto. And they're like, where's the CN Tower? <laughs> so we're going to head in over here? Yeah, I guess through the, the Great Hall or Grand Hall? Yeah, the Great Hall. Toronto's longest ongoing renovations project. <laughs> Did you see that, was it an Onion article where it said the headline was like, last known person living when they started the renovations just died? Oh, right. <laughs> I didn't see that, but that's pretty funny. <laughs> There's the Royal Bank Tower, which is real gold on those glass windows. Do you feel more comfortable with this? Because I, I saw you a long time ago and you had what looked like a selfie stick and an iPhone or yeah. something on it. Yeah. That's how I used to do it. And this is like a hundred times better. But you had a, a much taller perspective. It was kind of like a... Yeah, because I wanted to uh, kind of not basically pass by people's midsections. I kind of wanted to get above them a little bit, but this is good enough. As long as it's eye level for me here, that's fine. You know? Yeah, I kind of feel this is a good compromise because if I held it higher, it's a lot more noticeable. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want that whole fly in the wall effect. Yeah. So what's the got going on here now? Oh, 
monuments to multiculturalism. Sometimes this is like a, a big patio space, right? Yeah. I remember last winter they had a skinny. You want to head in this way? Yeah, let's head in and see how empty and forlorn Union Station looks right now. Oh, that door is shuttered. Oh, dang. I guess it's going this way. Okay. Have you been through that underground moat they just put the glass roof on and all that? Where is this? Just on the other side of here. I have not. It's pretty cool. It used to be open to the air, but they just put a glass roof over the whole thing to enclose it. So now if you're walking from Union Station to the subway, you basically don't have to go outdoors anymore. It's a little better. I wonder if these pigeons are each filming for their YouTube channel. <laughs> We should be wearing masks, I guess. All right. Mask you got. Uh, just saved us from getting yelled at in the comments. Okay. So look at the. You said it's the Great Hall. Great Hall. Built in the 1400s by the Romans. Is that it? <laughs> Let's go with that. Yeah, it sounds sweet. It sounds better. I was thinking for April Fool's actually doing like a factually incorrect walk of Toronto. And just kind of. That'd be fun. Make yeah. it up the stuff of everything. I guess I kind of blew that cover now, but. <laughs> I did a walk last year where I went through the Mink Mile and intentionally yeah, mispronounced the names of all the. Uh, the high-end shops. Yep, you I know? saw that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you know, not quite Grand Central, but it's it's pretty pretty close. I would say it's pretty good. When it's busy, it's quite the sight to see. Well, New York's got two big stations, right? Penn mm -hmm. and Grand Central. Yeah. And you can actually go take the Amtrak from here to Penn Station. That's true, right? Yeah. I think it starts off life as a via train here, but you will connect, and it's quite long. It's much better just to go down to the uh, right. Billy Bishop. Yeah, so we're coming up on an hour. We'll end the video before we hit the one hour mark. All right, so. Uh, I'll link to Ken's video in the description. I have no idea whose will be uploaded first. Maybe we can uh, coordinate so we both upload at the same time. All right. Well, I usually drop my videos at like 9 a.m. on weekday or weekend. Okay. Do you want to put this tomorrow morning at 9? Could you do that or is that too... How about the day after tomorrow? Monday? Yeah. All right. Okay. So you have just sentenced me to filming another video, so I have I'll something for tomorrow. Post a link <laughs> to Johnny's video. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this walk through St. Lawrence Market area in the financial district and here in Union Station. Yeah, let me know or let us know in the comments if you'd like to see something like this again. Maybe I can uh, swap Ken out for Ronald McDonald or someone or <laughs> vice versa. And, uh, I'm sure we'll do something like this again at some point. Oh yeah, this was fun. I enjoyed it. All right. Well, I'll, I'll let uh, Ken sign this one off. All right. Well, you know, like, comment, subscribe, share, tell your friends. All of the above. You know, Sent us Bitcoin. Definitely. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, we will continue. <laughs> All right. All right. Stay time. safe out there. See you guys. Bye.